Are we ready like Freddie? You ready? You're rolling? Rolling. Uh, Salaamu Alaikum. Peace to all out there and to all in here. I won't be very long today because as I can hear to my right there's a lot of noise and that noise is wavy, is, is, is billowing towards me like a tsunami and eventually when it gets to the point where I'm shouting to hear myself I'm gonna leave. Content, you have my you know, I'm going to leave if it gets too emotional around here. Now, like I was saying to my brother before we started rolling, I prefer discussion over debate. Because when we're doing debate, somebody's got to be a winner. And we live in a world where the person who comes out second best must be left dead on the floor. And that sort of thing is clickbait. It's very, very emotionally attractive to a base kind of constituency, but not the kind of people I want to talk to. So I am here, first and foremost, to exchange ideas, to give the two little bit, my two cents of what I know, and to learn. When I leave here, I hope to come away from this place a little more enlightened than when I left. And I hope I can leave a nugget or two that people can go and do the research. I have a book here. Just the, I don't want to. I wanted to bring the book, but yeah, he got. No, I want to bring it to show the people. Wait a minute. Clearly, very valuable. Um, I brought this book. I have no vested interest in the writer. I knew him from my days at SOAS. He is also a fellow student of the School of Oriental and African Studies. So we give our old boys a plug. However, the book is written by a non-Muslim, he has, so he's not invested in what's written in this book, but it's highly informative. And the reason I brought this book, I saw uh, one of my interlocutors with whom I spoke last week. He's standing just across there now, and I was hoping to show him some information because he made a claim, and people felt I did not allow him to sustain his claim. The claim he made, and this is all introductory. Today I'm going to talk about Ethiopia, Egypt, and war on the Blue Nile. So this is introductory. This is like taking up from where we left off last week. We're reviewing the minutes of what happened. And I, he was telling me that Islam was imposed on the Yoruba by force via the Sokoto Caliphate. Now this book here, on this page, Islam in the forest zone and the coastal regions of West Africa explains so we're looking at page 166. Like I said, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. There is no point, because I raised a clear, well-defined issue, and I produce facts when I speak. You do not see me. I might be very emotive when I articulate, but I always present facts. What I get from people is that, like, they haven't heard a thing I said. And that's becoming galling. You know why? People pick a side and they've already decided before you've even opened your mouth. So here's what. I will just advise people to go to such texts. If anybody believes their roots, uh -huh. if anybody believes what I say is false or I'm trying to massage the facts to support my conclusion, I can only present them with the text, page 166, Go and read about how Islam entered Yoruba land, how it entered the Oyo Empire, and how things panned out from there. If you want me to make a quick explanation of what happened, the Oyo Empire, as is the nature of all empires, was expansionist. And so, they also took slaves from wherever they can get them. When they conquered parts of Nupe land or Borgu, they took slaves from there. When they conquered bits of the north, which is today the Sokoto Caliphate, they took slaves from there. With the result that inside the Oyo Empire, before the rise of the Sokoto Caliphate, they had about 20,000 escaped Maroons who were Muslim. And they formed inside the empire a naturally uh, disaffected constituency. 
So when a fungi, they can come from of Ilore, a particular pr uh, province of the Oyo Empire, when Afonja, remember the name Afonja, when he defected to fight on the side of the new, ex newly expanding Sokoto Caliphate, that was the beginning of the end of Oyo, in that when Oyo came to retrieve their breakaway province, the Muslims there fought alongside Afonja and annexed the region which is today in Nigeria called Kwara State with its capital at Ilore. This is the history of that. Plus, with the, most, the disaffected Muslims who were ex-slaves, slaves that the Yoruba Oyo were trading in. And you might wonder why I'm, making, I'm placing so much emphasis on the Yorubas as slave traders. It's because everybody at that period, Dahomey, Kumasi, the Ashanti Empire, Sokoto, the Muslim Caliphate, Kanem Borno, another Muslim Sultanate, all at that time were dealing and trading in slaves, Muslim and non-Muslim. But to single out the Muslims for exceptional censure is our one-sided look at history. And that's all I want to say about that. I will now replace this text and, and start my discussion now about the Blue Nile, Ethiopia, and Egypt. Hold on.